here, and this is Grimm's Comics Corner. We are back with the Invisibles, so let's go ahead and get started. This is Volume 3. Things are going to get a little weird and crazy now. Well, they already are, but now they're going to get real crazy. Grant Morrison, of course. It's the end of the world as we know it. Dulce, New Mexico. Ugh! Ugh! Yeah! No! Ugh! Ugh! Clear! We'll cover you from here, baby. Bobby, get down! Get. Cut. Shit! Bobby! Oh, shit! Bastards! Puck, puck, puck! You crash! This has better be worth the. Oh, God, it's real! It's fucking real! Black Science, Part 1, Bangin'. Grant Morrison, Writer. Phil Jimenez, Penciler. And John Stokes, Inker. Go! Bang! Nice and smooth. That's what you always say, isn't it? Nice and smooth. What's it mean? Nothing really, I don't know. It just sounds cool. It sounds good. Cool, I should say. This is America. Ray Davies says it at the start of David Watts. What? It's a kink song. The jam did a cover of it. Fa 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 fa. Okay. Not my period. So what is your period exactly, Robin? Your period is a thing ladies have once every year. Your father would tell you all about it when you're a little more grown up. I told you I spoke to Fanny. She had some kind of shamanic dream apparently, and she's convinced Boy and Jack to come back from New York City. They'll be here tomorrow. You told me. Huh. <laughs> And you're deliberately changing the subject. I just wanted to know where you got hold of a bracelet that transmits an anti-nanomachine field. Interesting technology. State of the art, I'll tell you about it soon enough. What about you? You seem to be getting back to your old self. Physically, yeah, I suppose. We're enjoying VIP guest status at the most in luxurious invisible safe house in America after all. It's just everything else. We've been here for a year. I was in that torture chamber for a day, and it, it's the torture chamber that sticks. Sir Miles' face. The horror. The horror. I dream about the bastard. But you survived him. No, it was Fanny and Jack's magic that saved me. I thought Sir Miles had destroyed my face. I thought he'd cut off my fingers. A few more hours on that bloody Key 17 stuff, and I'd have swapped in my soul for a packet of crisps. I was dying, and I was sh and I was shit scared. It's so horrible to realize you're just the same as everyone else, isn't it? Hmm. It's been Olympic. Olympian. Jesus Christ Almighty, what am I trying to say? I'm so completely... Uh, there. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm... What? Excuse me, I think I've lost one of my fillings. What? Didn't we say we'd go down and join Mason for one of those creepy dinners? I shouldn't really say that, should I? He's let us recuperate here in splendid surroundings. So call him up. Tell him you've already gone down, dearest. I'm actually looking forward to the others turning up tomorrow. Your friends. I've even been missing Jack stealing things. This place can be so... I don't know. It's a little creepy when I'm here on my own. You start to get used to having people around you all, around all the time. I'm going to be sorry when you all head back to the uh, the front lines of the war against whatever it is. This place can get pretty big and empty. Maybe you should eat in the small dining room, Mason. There we go. Ah, oh, this is the small dining room. Tell Robin about your abduction, Mason. You haven't heard this story, have you? This is how one of America's richest men ends up on our side. Let's hear it, Mason. There's not much to tell. These things, you know what it's like. It's like trying to explain a really meaningful dream to someone. It's all so inconclusive. I was nine. We were coming home from some kind of party, some fat kid's birthday. My mom was driving the car. I don't know where my dad was making deals. I remember my sister complaining about a burning sensation up and down her back, and my mom said something weird. She said, How big the moon looks tonight. Like it's coming down to earth to sleep. I started to really look at my sister's face in the light. She seemed flat and two-dimensional, and I thought I'd understood something fundamental about the world, and then... 
There was this little room with masks on the walls. The masks could talk. I think it was the mass. They told me to take a drink from the Holy Grail. And when I did, I suddenly knew all this stuff. I started having all kinds of ideas. It occurred to me that what I was drinking was software. Liquid software. They found a way to record information homeopathically onto water molecules. That's what I'm trying to do with one of my companies. We're working to create the first homeopathic computer drink. Imagine buying the Encyclopedia Britannica in a can. Imagine drinking your favorite book or film. Real smart drinks. That'd be fascinating. Was there a language? Did they try to teach you a language? To use emotional aggregates, it's like one word, one sound represents a whole complex of ideas and associations and feelings. It's kind of meta language, you know what I mean? And that's how you became one of us. Excuse me. We're going to read. The thing is, I knew then that the world was so much bigger and stranger than I've been led to believe. And that's how you became one of us. I just want to see that cup again. I just want to feel that again. I had the Holy Grail in my hands. Anyway, apart from the drinks idea, we're plowing money into all kinds of interesting projects. Environmental stuff. Fringe science. There's a young Japanese guy who's doing time travel research, for instance. That's interesting. What's... Hmm, Mr. Lang? Should I have dressed for dinner? Hi. A friend to see... Oh, excuse me. Uh, that was... Yeah, sometimes the panels are a bit funny. A friend to see you, sir. And he said, is that... Should I have dressed for dinner? Hi. Jolly Roger. And you say you trained with her in Africa? What was she, your tantric sex instructress? I doubt it. I've got too, too many balls for her class. Our Jolly's a notorious lesbian. Leads a dyke activist cell called the Poison Pussies. Oof. She's an assassin, same as me. My mate Elfie had trained us both. What is that? I'll tell you later when we go to New Mexico. New Mexico? Why New Mexico? Little fluffy clouds. So, does she want us to help her or something? Jolly Roger, what's it all about? Well, the others are back tomorrow. We'll find out what she wants and put it to the vote. So what are we going to do until then? You're the one with psychic powers, love. You tell me. I ran to Mason's because Mason's is where we always run to when we fuck up. I didn't expect to find you here. I didn't expect to find myself here. We were in England recruiting Jack to the team and... You're not talking about fuck-ups. I ended up short and tortured. I almost died. Oops. Uh, wrong. I want to get the page count. Uh, you know how I always have a page count here? Show info. There we are. Page count. So we know where, where we're at. And you can see how long I've been reading. <clears throat> Again, I didn't expect to find myself here. We were in England recruiting Jack to the team, and you're talking about fuck-ups. I ended up shot and tortured. I almost died. I'd be dead now if Jack hadn't summoned up whatever power it is he's got and healed me. This is the kid everyone's talking about? Some people are starting to say he's Maitreya, the future Buddha. They should try spending ten minutes with him. I suppose if the Buddha grew up in poor Liverpool and swore a lot, he might be a bit like Jack. Anyway, a friend got us out of the country, and then Mason was good enough to let us stay here in beautiful upstate New York. So I've spent the last year trying to get over what happened, and my team have finally had a chance to rest up and recharge their batteries and go back to acting like normal people again, and what I'm trying, excuse me, what I'm saying is I just don't know if I'm ready to rejoin the fray yet. Come on, you shoot like Clint Eastwood. Okay, so maybe I'm ready. Let's see how the others feel. Fucking brilliant, man. Listen to the voice of the Buddha. Time to lock up the family silver. Hey, where's G where's Jeeves Jeevezy? Tell that butler I'm fucking starving. Hey! Darlings, the color in your lives has returned. Jack, how did you like New York? Fucking amazing. That's where I'm gonna live when I'm as rich as you, man. I'm gonna live on top of the fucking Chrysler building. Hey, girl, you're seriously glowing. You know what I'm saying? What, you and the king been getting up to... Excuse me, what you and the king been getting up to while we've been gone? Meaningless physical gratification. Hair is great, by the way. You and King Mob? God, I don't know which of you I'm more jealous of, darling. Jack, this is, uh, Jolly Roger. Roger, this is Jack Frost I told you about. All right. 
Jack's our resident wit and raconteur. And this is <clears throat> and this is Boy, and Lord Fanny, the rest of my team. Hi, charm, darling. So what's the story? Guess you must have heard of the Archuleta Mesa facility at Dulce in New Mexico. According to rumor, it's a joint U.S. Uh, it's a joint U.S. ultra terrestrial installation. The real nuts say the ultras are experimenting on people to create some kind of hybrid drone species. So the place is supposed to be impenetrable. It's crawling with elite Delta Force soldiers and rigged with all kinds of sensors and shit. No big deal. We got in. Our information came from a woman who'd worked in the bioweapon labs. She had all kinds of weird material on human memory transplants and 4D cameras and shit. I don't know about that, but I know what I saw. HIV antiviral agent. Bastards have had it since 1978. As far as we know, the virus itself had been engineered and tested before that, but they waited until they had a successful antiviral agent before introducing HIV into the community. Shit. The smart money says the Ultras provided the tech. HIV is a sophisticated nanomachine, a biological robot. Jesus, they've got the fucking AIDS cure in there. Who knows what else they're working on? Genetically targeted Ebola? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Only two of us got out. They killed my girl Bobby. Fuck it. This is AIDS. How many people have they killed? I'll go back in there myself if I have to. But now that we're here, you want us to waltz in past security and out again with the antivirus and your pals in our back pockets? Sounds like a laugh. New Mexico, eh? Mechtaub, it is written. Dolce. I think it's actually Dolce. Uh, Dolce, New Mexico. Another fucking remote viewer. What makes these assholes think they can just astrally project in here and look for UFOs and we won't notice? We usually fuck with them a little, then send them home to write crank articles for the paranoid press. You gotta love paranoia. It's what made this country great, Quimper. Fear of the Reds, fear of getting old, fear of failure, fear of each other. Deep down, we all just want to be the same. Homogeneity? Homogeni homogeneity? Or homogeneity? Hmm. I was gonna ask that. It was be homogeneity, but he would say homogeneity. Homogeneity. That's a, that's a little different, because I'm always one to say homogenous or homogeny, but I've never heard of homogeneity. Maybe it's homogeneity. Let's, let's use that. Homogeneity is good. We must destroy diversity. Hell, we're doing what we can. You ask any kid in Tibet what he'd rather have, Buddhist enlightenment or a fucking Big Mac? Corporate viral technology. Please excuse me while I check with my new little puppet, Colonel Friday. Ah! She will lead our enemies to us, and we will make puppets of them all. Ha ha. West. Speed is about human uh, uh, evolution, right? It's so obvious. The bus represents the world. Watch it again. They've got every nationality on there. Not only that, but it's been driven to disaster by this guy who's either made up to look Cro-Magnon or chosen because he looks that way. He's our brutal evolutionary heritage driving the world to Armageddon while everybody argues. The whole thing's symbolic. Christ, I only asked for a bowl of cornflakes and they bring me this this canoe filled with cornflakes and bananas and, and maple syrup. Just look at the amount of times you see the number 23. It's in scene after scene. That's not coincidence. The whole thing's a coded message. These tortillas were for sharing, Jack. Yeah, well, too fucking bad, because I've had the lot. You gotta ask for the hottest fucking salsa, though. I hate it when it just tastes like tomatoes and that. And finally, after the whole tantric love trip on the subway train at the end, they burst out in the street in front of a cinema showing 2001 A Space Odyssey. Which is all about human evolution. Mason, you need help. I see this weird occult stuff every time I watch a movie. Think about Pulp Fiction. The glowing thing in the 666 suitcase is Marcellus's soul, right? The band-aid on his neck at the bar scene with Bruce Willis is where the soul was extracted. I mean, I could go on all day. Check out Speed. Next time you watch it, just keep in mind that the bus is the world and that big gap in the highway construction is the apocalypse. Okay, but what does it mean? What difference does it make? It means, I don't know, it means basically that some movies are clearly being made by invisibles and they contain messages for other invisibles. Invisibles talking to one another in their own secret language. Bathroom. The movies are signals. They let us know that others are out there. Mason, you've just turned the last ten minutes of our lives into a Tarantino scene. 
I'd call that a triumph for postmodernism any day of the week. You're pissing on your shoes, cowboy. I guess we should hit the road. We should make Albuquerque tonight, and then it's just a short, short... Which one of you sick fucks thought it was that was funny? Goddamn fucking she-mail standing there looking at me like I'm the faggot. Hey, come on. It's too early in the morning for this and we're leaving anyway. Why don't I buy you and your friends a drink? Why don't you shut the fuck up, Yankee? I'll get to you just as soon as I get done with the she-mail and the bald cocksucker here. Well, is that you, John Wayne? Is this me? Fuck you trying to... I'm telling you, you're in the wrong film, fat boy. You're not in the cowboy film you thought you were in. This is a different kind of movie. And you're in the scene where the redneck shit kicker picks on the stranger in town, only it turns out to be Big Arnie or a gang of vampires. I'll bet you've seen that a million times, cowboy. Sure. So here's the deal. You just made the mistake of your life, but you can wish away your sins by apologizing to the lady. Otherwise, I squeeze you. I squeeze. You pop. And guess who's singing Castrato in church on Sunday? Dig? Billy Bob? Everything's fine. I, uh, I called you a faggot, and, uh, well, I'm sorry. Fuck. That's all right, darling. I am a faggot, and you do have a lovely dick. Oh, for God's sake, let's just get out of here before somebody gets killed. Mason, you're the voice of reason. I don't want cowboy blood on my hands. English fucking... Fuck them if they can't take a joke. Let's do Dolce. Yes, let's do Dolce. Yes, let's do Dolce. Continued. You see where they're starting to get a little matrixy now? It kind of makes me want to watch Pulp Fiction and see what the 666 on the suitcase is and see if that really is Marcellus' soul. Or Marcellus is not Marcellus. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you mispronounce names. You know how it is. I am become death, the shatterer of worlds. That's what Oppenheimer said when the first atom bomb was detonated out there somewhere. Of course, they've said, you know, destroyer of worlds, but, you know, there's like a million metal albums where they use that quote. It's getting pathetic. 20 miles away from Ground Zero, a girl called Georgia Green, blind all her life, saw a brief light. The Rio Grande looks like chocolate flowing. How did that happen? It's just the drugs, Mason. Oh, yeah, right. Elephant head. Elephant head. I worship a god with an elephant head. Black Science Part 2. Kicking. San... Oh, it is Sanso Pleb... Peblo. Il de Sanso Peblo. Peblo. Uh, I'm not... You know, my Spanish is not great, guys. I know it's... Uh, it is Pueblo, right? believe so. New Mexico. Or New Mexico. Huff. Ugh. Fuh. Yeah. Ugh. Shit. Nice moves, girl. Name's Roger. You okay? See you later. Sure. That was Silat. She, that was Silat she was using. It's a martial art from Malaysia. Or is it called Silat? I don't know. I've seen King Mob use it, but she's good. That Jolly Roger is good. What you doing up so early? Big day. Then I heard all the grunting and I thought she was seducing you. I came out to save your honor. Yeah, right. I think she thinks I'm a lesbian because my code name's Boy. You know Fanny doesn't like her. She thinks there's something creepy about her. And it's no big deal. Drag queens and dykes hardly ever get along. But she is leading us on a mission into a heavily guarded military installation to steal an alleged AIDS vaccine. I know. Isn't that kind of telling? I said, drag queens and dykes hardly ever get along. Hmm. It actually kind of makes me want to look that up. I wonder what the relationship between drag queens and lesbians actually is. Maybe the lesbians are kind of upset or jealous that the men are pulling off women. I don't know. Maybe they want the women, the, the men that are dressed as women to actually be women and they're upset that they're not? It's a very interesting... I mean, this is just a comic quote, so it could be false, but I'd definitely like to look into it because that, that's kind of 
It's kind of interesting if it's true. The guys are still up there taking LSD. Who are these people we're hanging with anyway? Well, you know the guy, Austin, the Indian. That's his house we're staying in, and apparently he's the medicine man here. Oh, oh, excuse me. No, no, I said that. I said that. Ah, uh, the Scottish guy Emilio works with Austin. He's one of King Mob's friends from way back. And they're all up on the Mesa getting high? I'll bet it's getting really, you know, Native American up there. Carlos Castaneda, these are your children. No, I'm serious. If it wasn't for the bats, ha 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 ha. If it wasn't for the bats, insects would take over the world. What, you mean like replace world leaders and occupy positions of social and economic power? That's not what I'm saying, Emilio. I'm talking about a universe that is totally interdependent and holographic and, well, bats, you know. Ha 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 ha. Oppenheimer's love nest was right down by the Pueblo. Did anyone see the wine? I was drinking it a, mo a minute ago. That was hours ago, man. When you were sick. Remember when you took that second tab of acid? Oh, fuck. Have we come up on that yet? The first atomic bomb was detonated on July 16th, 1945, which makes it a cancer, with cancer rising. The moon was also square with Saturn at the time, which is the same as Adolf, Adolf Hitler's birth chart. Mason, I've got to hand it to you. You're one of the coolest, richest men in America I've ever met. Uh-huh. So this is LSD, huh? Well, am I supposed to start crying and sobbing about how my father didn't love me enough now? I've seen Easy Rider. You're doing okay, Mason. Oops. You're a blue-shirted savage and you kissed the anus of Cortez. No, I didn't. I didn't kiss his anus. That's called Barbalith, that is. Don't you remember? So I tried going into that base in Dolce you told me about. We have a different name for it, but you call it remote viewing. I kind of sent out my mind. It's pretty easy to do. By the way, there's some wonderful FBI documents where you can find that they were definitely getting fucking accurate as shit results from remote viewing. Uh, we're talking about sending people out to battlefields and actually being able to describe the battlefield they sent them to accurately from a fucking projection. That's pretty fascinating. I'm talking the government was researching this. Uh, there's a lot of remote viewing uh, ESP documents, and they are fascinating. Don't forget about Sony's research into Esper's. Uh, they did close down the facility, but apparently there was some really interesting shit that happened. I forgot all about Sony's ESP research, or Esper research as they called it. But yes, it was a thing. They were going to try to make Sony products that allow you to open doors with your mind and shit. This was something that Japan was seriously looking into at one point in time under Sony. Yes, I'm not bullshitting you. It's there. The research existed. I mean, same thing with the FBI documents, which I actually looked at myself. It's not hard to do. They've been declassified, so definitely check them out. Remember, it is a government website, uh, so you are probably being looked at, but yeah. I came in low over the base and started making maps of the buildings and the first few levels of tunnels. Then I went down a couple of hundred feet underground, and they caught me in some kind of energy field. It's like a net to catch spirits. They can do that. Now, I don't know if that's a thing, but I don't see why not. But before they caught me, I got a glimpse of level 6, and there are things in there. Genetic experience. i They're doing it to people and animals. Can we talk about something else? I feel a little... I just saw this porcelain train right in front of me. It explains everything. <sighs> Is it dawn? It'll soon be dawn. The way I see it, if there's only one time, then there's only one death. Only one simultaneous moment of death that's the same for everything that's ever lived. We all die together. Hop, 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 hoo, hoo! It's a smart way to get downhill. The Darwinian way. Eights for a day. Fucking hell, that was a trip, eh? Is it dawn yet? What's all this about? Oh, did you notice? Let me... Now, this is where... Okay, now this is where Invisible starts to get interesting. You have to really look at panels, if you haven't already been. But, you did notice that 
it's daytime to everybody but King Mob. He keeps asking if it's dawn because he's seeing night. He's seeing stars. Fascinating, right? What's all this about? Invisible cells tend to model their structure around elemental symbolism. We each take on a different role within the group. And every so often we like to change it around a bit and scramble it up a bit. Now a lot of people... Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, paradigm shifting. I know I haven't been that out of practice. Okay, so one thing that you do in Chaos Magic. Uh, I never did this personally, but I know a lot of people who did. And it was called paradigm shifting. Basically, you would switch your whole goddamn religion and beliefs up for, like, a month just to see what it was like on the other side of things, to get a view. It's not a bad idea, but you don't want to become brainwashed by something because you have to be careful. Say you are, you want to try Christianity. So you go to churches and you get involved with that and you, you know, you do this for a month and you understand the Christian religion. And then maybe you want to try Islam. You know, you go, you read the Quran, and you understand, you know, how to do that. You put, you have your, you do your prayers and things like, you know, all that sort of thing. And then uh, maybe you try. Well, I'm going to be an atheist for this time, or maybe I'm going to be a pagan, or I'm going to be Satan. I mean, whatever, whatever. I'm going to be Christian. I'm going to be, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, you basically say, change your political beliefs. Well, I'm more, I'm going to be a Republican. How about that? I'm going to be a Republican. I'm going to listen to Fox News and, uh, you know, I'm going to just do that whole thing and and support uh, Republican, just learn Republican points, promote Republican points. Then I'm going to go full Democrat and I'm going to support Democrat points. I'm going to watch Democrat t uh, channels. I'm going to learn all this for a whole month, and I'm going to paradigm shift, and I'm going to learn what it's like to be on the other side. Now, this is fascinating. It's really, really interesting that people do this. Um, it's like trying to play a game that you don't like. Like, if I, I, don't like really, I don't like RTS games, but I have some RTS games. And if it's, it's like if I wanted to just play RTS games for an entire month. Nothing but RTS. I don't like RTS. But I'm going to try to understand RTS. I don't think I'd do this. I just don't really want to waste the time. But it's a fascinating thing to do. Maybe you don't like uh, dungeon crawlers, so you play those. Or maybe you don't really like hip-hop, so you play hip-hop hip for a month. I'm going to listen to all these hip-hop artists. Nothing but hip-hop comes through my ears. Okay, I'm going to listen to metal. Screaming, blaring metal. I'm not into this music. I don't understand, but I'm going to focus this as long as I can for a whole month and just get into it and learn this this music uh, country music you know pop I'm gonna get into all the pops uh, pop music that comes out um, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this but paradigm shifting is a fascinating way to understand things that you normally wouldn't be interested in maybe you want to try to play a sport and you're not you know I mean there's so many different ways you could do it um, and you might even learn some skills or learn some appreciation for something that you didn't have before. Uh, it's really fascinating. Uh, maybe people should do it when they're younger. I guess there's some people that should do it when they're older, too. But, you know, as you get older, you get more set in your ways. Um, perhaps paradigm shifting in your youth is a good way to get out of that. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Some of this is kind of a paradigm shift for me because obviously some of these points are not points I personally 100% am like 100, you know, cold with. Like there's a lot of, um, like they mentioned postmodernism and we know that postmodernism is not like the, the best thing that's happened to our country so far. So yeah, I don't agree with all the points here, but I'm reading this because you do see the Matrix influence. And uh, it's going to become even further refined as, as the issues continue. So uh, we're going to keep reading and uh, hopefully things will manifest in that way. <clears throat> Materialize, rather. I know people like to use manifest all the time. I get tired of it myself. <clears throat> That's what we're doing now. I've gone from being air to earth. So now I will have all the boring mundane stuff. I will handle, rather, all the boring mundane stuff like finances and equipment. Water? What's that mean? Who was water last time? I was, darling. You'll love it. Splash around a little. 
Our enemies will be with us shortly. I played with the woman last night. She thought I was a bad dream. So you're able to keep control of more than one at a time, Kimper? This is only a game, Colonel Friday, and the rules are simpler than you might think. That man there, watch. Jesus Christ Almighty, Henry, everybody knows the name of Donald Duck's nephews. Domination, submission, and obedience. Control. What the fuck are you doing? Hell, I even know them in Danish. The technology of total control. That's everything packed for tonight. I'm going to bed for a few hours. Want to come? In a while. So how was your ritual up on the mesa? We sat about laughing mostly. Mason seemed to enjoy his first trip. I asked my favorite gods to look after us tonight. We're going to need all the help we can get. What's that you're listening to? It's a special tape that tells me what to do. Lift that arm. Take a confident step. And another one. You're doing great. That sort of thing. Uh, nah, I was listening to the Kula Shaker where the the Kula Shaker record. What are you waiting for? What makes you think I'm waiting for something? It's obvious. I can feel it. You think? You're tense, which isn't all that surprising. I know since we intend to break into, <clears throat> since we intend to break into and out of a high security installation. But that's not what you're waiting for right now, is it? I can't hide anything from you, can I? I'm waiting to make history. Almost. Almost there, baby. I won't pry. See you later. I'll be the attractive lump under the Indian blanket. Just there. That's the spot. Just there. That's the spot. Ah, oh, come on, Kay. Let's have a smile. There. That didn't hurt, did it? Okay, let's hustle. Mom's determined to make it to Sedona tonight. Great. Well, at least I don't have to be leader anymore. Bad luck, love. You get to wear the leather. Archuleta, Mexi Archuleta Mesa, Dolce, New Mexico. Okay. I guess this is it. King Mob, boy, Jolly Roger and I are going in. The rest of you are back up on this. Work it, baby. Austin and I came up with something. The spill is designed to paralyze all surveillance equipment for at least an hour. You have the remote viewing maps I made? You're on your own, darling. Dazzle. Take care down there. This is the place. The shack's just a facade. They use this as a maintenance entrance. Fuck! Jesus, Roger, you're ruthless. He was Delta Force security. Fuck him. You got the aniseed buns for the dog? Destroys their conditioning. Huh. Okay. The door should be behind the clock. This is amazing. It's like Batman. It just means that the people who designed this place watch the same dumb TV shows as you did when they were kids. We're going to the ventilation system. Everybody stay close. Wow. Shit. Fuck. This is insane. I can't believe we're in here. Shh. Hey, come on. Just a second, I saw something back there. I just have to check. Christ, the porcelain train. What is that? What have they got down there? The aliens in Independence Day represent the negative side of the human psyche. There are death wish, nuclear annihilation, all that stuff. It takes our best qualities to... Who's whistling? Nobody whistled, Austin. I heard whistling. I think we're being attacked. Oh, fuck. Attacked by what? Who's attacking us? Spirits. Last time it was a six-foot owl. It's getting cold in here. We better defend ourselves. Fast. There. Aw, oh, shite. What's all this about? Literally says, fuck you all. I don't know. What do you think, darling? Hey, we better get moving. She's right. I know what I saw. Well, there's nothing there now. This is freaking me out. I know, something's wrong. We've made a terrible mistake. It's not just the AIDS vaccine. They've got things down there. Excuse me, they've got things down here. This is where it's all happening. That thing I saw, it was... They've got something there that'll... Excuse me, they've got something here that'll blow the lid off everything. It's the Roswell Retrieval. That's what they're keeping here. It's not a flying saucer. It's more than that. It's the implants. What? 
What are you talking about? What implants? We already have the implants. Don't you understand? We've had them all along. The implants were in our polio immunizations. I can't. They can control any of us. You. Me. Clutch. Roger, they taught us stuff to fight this. Use the techniques, Roger. The white flame meditation. I can't. I can't fight. Try. Your life depends on it. I have no life. I'm just a marionette. I can kill both of you before I die. Jesus, what's happening here? This shit's going right down the toilet. Oof. Man, things are really getting out of control now. But, I think that's a good stopping place. So yeah, we'll catch the Invisibles again maybe next week. Maybe next week. I'm kind of curious. Things are really getting interesting now. So, uh, keep, yeah, keep watching. Uh, I'll have some more. This is the Grim Lord, and I'm out for Grim's Comics Corner with The Invisibles.